Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So today we're going to be going over the Nokia G22 phone, which really is probably more accurate to call it an HMD global phone. This is not the Nokia that made your grandpa's 3310, but it is a device that I think is worth talking about. They want to make a phone that is more easy to fix, and you can see that pictured over here. It takes about five minutes to get to the battery, supposedly, and 20 minutes to get to the screen. They don't make it difficult to access. They're not using proprietary pentalobe screws or anything to make it more difficult to get in your device, and you can buy a toolkit for it for about $5. The battery is going to be $31, and the screen is going to be $52. I know some people here may say, oh, that's $30 for a battery. That's probably a duck. I mean, anybody who does cell phone repair and laptop repair for a living fully well understands that you're probably better off paying a little more for the OEM battery when you have the opportunity. And many of us would love to be able to pay for OEM batteries. We just don't have the ability to. 30 bone bucks to get a guaranteed OEM battery that is not going to have any of the issues of like it dies at 20% or after six months you've depleted 90% of its capacity. Really cool, really nice, and well worth the premium especially when you're talking about the phone, only costing 180 bucks. This phone is $180, and best of all, check out what it comes with. Look at this. Micro SD card slot, so if you want to have a terabyte of storage on your phone, you can. It's not like this piece of shit Pixel where you can spend $1,000 on it. I feel like I got this piece of shit for free, but you could spend up to $1,000 on this, and if you have, you know, seven or nine years worth of videos and stuff, you have to pick through them and figure out, what do I not want to store on my phone? Because you're not able to expand the storage with a micro SD card slot with this $1,000 device the way you can with this thing that costs 180 bucks. If your Bluetooth headphones die and you don't have a charger on you or you forgot your, to charge them up or something like that, you can plug a normal set of headphones into this without a dongle, but this one you can because it has a headphone jack and it's IP52, which is not, again, not IP68 water resistance, but better than what you get with a BlackBerry Curve in 2007. This is, it's not a horrible device that we are talking about here. This is the C32 I was showing you the specifications of and by mistake, but as you can see, it's pretty much the same thing for the G22, which is the model that I'm talking about. You get a headphone jack, a micro SD card slot, which is very cool. Now, the only downsides I see to this that I would make me a little bit wary is the phone that is advertised as being repairable comes with Android 12. The phone that is not advertised for this repair program comes with Android 13. So my fear here is getting into this area where when you're looking at specs, the person that's just looking at specs without understanding the background of repairability and everything else will say, I want the phone that's not fixable. And then everybody's saying, look, we offered you a fixable phone and none of you wanted it. See, nobody really cares about repair. When in reality, people didn't want to buy a device that came obsolete right out the box. This phone is running Graphene OS, which I think is way better than running stock Android. And you should all look into it because it makes it a lot harder for Google spyware to work if you don't want Google spyware to work on your phone. Very cool. This phone had Graphene OS. I had Android 13 last summer. I had Android 13 on this last summer. This phone even in the first quarter of 2023, is still running Android 12. So it's one of those things where you're giving people this, like, do I want a more secure operating system or do I want repairability? Like it, it shouldn't be a this or that, but in this case it is. And also given that it's a low end phone, if the only phones that are hyper repairable are the hyper low end phones, then you may run into an issue where people are stuck choosing between repairability or specifications. That's something you see happening with the framework laptop where you have a laptop where they'll release, they'll give you a, a schematic, which is really, really cool. You can buy all the components. They're great and friendly when it comes to repair. And a lot of people are not buying it, not because they don't like that it's repairable. They don't like that if they want something with a beefier processor or a dedicated graphics card, there's literally no option. And, you know, I've heard people say, well, look, see, this proves that nobody, everybody isn't buying a framework. That means people don't care about it. No, it's just that there's limited options. And in Framework's case, that's because they are a much smaller company that is not as well capitalized as Dell and Lenovo when it comes to being able to produce 20 different product lines and mass produce them at very competitive prices. Here, I'm not really sure what is the case. It's not like they're known for making flagship phones or anything like that at this point in time uh, to begin with. And I, I don't think you really need a flagship phone today for like what 99% of people do with their phone. But my my main concern would be these two things. Again, you're, you're kind of limping the phone that is the repairable one by shipping it with an older operating system. One of the things that I went to, you know, talked about in this video about Motorola lying to its users of the Motorola One about getting updates uh, of Android, 
is that you can never trust that a manufacturer of anything is going to ship something into the future. Whatever you buy the product with, you need to be happy with how it shows up because you just have to assume that everything is vaporware besides what came with the product. Whether we are talking about iAudio with the, with the X5 advertising certain features and functionality of the X5 MP3 player back in 2005, which yes, I still remember that shit. Or we're talking about a Tesla with full self-driving. Virtually anything you buy nowadays, if it didn't come with the device, if the manufacturer is saying it, you will get it a few months into the future, just give us money now, assume it's vaporware. So in this case, I will assume that this phone that says it ships with Android 13 actually will get Android 13. Whereas this phone that says it ships with Android 12, but we promise we'll give you more later, I assume that that will come with nothing but Android 12 because, well reality. Also, this phone doesn't have 5G. You're stuck with a phone that only has 4G, but as I've mentioned from my AT&T unlimited data plan with StreamSaver turned off and only one gigabyte used that month, and with a flagship phone, 5G is a freaking meme anyway. Yeah, look at that. Look at that 5G video right there. So I don't, I don't think it's, it's much of an issue. But at the end of the day, I think this is really a step in the right direction. Again, have they made schematics available? No. But, you know, it's, it's a step in the right direction. Again, they're, they're not, this isn't a company that's marketing itself as a solely based in repairability company. It's just, you know, your standard tier phone manufacturer uh, most certainly is a step in the right direction. You know, again, it is, it's a cheap system on a chip. It's a Unisoc T606. Uh, the other thing that I would be concerned about here, if since it comes with an older operating system, is can you load your own custom ROMs? How difficult are they going to make it for you to load a custom ROM on this phone? If they don't give you Android 13, do you have the option for somebody else to come up with a ROM and then put it on that phone? Are you going to be able to root it and everything like that? How hard are they going to make that? Because that's another aspect of ownership. It's not just whether you can buy parts to fix it and be able to repair the device that you own. It's also about having the ability to install the software of your choice on the device, particularly when the manufacturer is shipping it with software that is, um, uh, again, I don't want to be too mean because it's a $180 phone, but obsolete right out of the box. And th th there's something about that that, there's just something about that, that like this phone over here, not the fixable one, Android 13, this phone over here, the fixable one, Android 12. It's like, it just feels like one of those illusion of choice things. And I don't want to be too hard on them because again, it is just, you're giving me a headphone jack, micro SD card slot, you don't have the stupid fingerprint sensor built into the screen, which again, sucks so bad. It sucks so bad having a fingerprint sensor built into the screen because like, again, you have, to, it, it's just so nice when it's like, yeah, I don't want to be too hard on them, but now, th those are the things that I'm kind of curious about. I'd like to see whether or not they make it easy for you to install an operating system of your choice when they decide to pull a Motorola and not give you the updates. And I would like to see this open up to a wider line of phones. Because again, right now, if you really do want uh, hardware or software freedom, there is always a steep price to pay. And it tends not to be monetary. It just tends to be in terms of features, functionality, updates, that type of thing. And um, while this is a start, I... And I'm, and I'm appreciative of that start. I'd like to see this kind of move into the higher end models as well so that you're not presenting your average everyday user with this choice. Like, do you want it to be good or do you want it to be repairable? Do you want it to be up to date or do you want it to be repairable? It would just kind of be nice to have all the stuff we have right now. But by the, and by the way, if, if you need a battery, like we'll sell it to you rather than only selling it to authorized repair shops that were only available in certain areas and have one star on Yelp and everything like that. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I look forward to trying out this device. I think it's, wor it's worth a try just to see how easy it is to actually open it after all once it comes out. And just to go over, I mean, yeah, this is such a rarity. Micro SD card slot and a headphone jack. I, 10 years ago, if somebody told me that would be a rarity, if somebody told me 10 years ago that with most $1,000 Android phones, I would actually have to look through my collection of pictures and videos and figure out what I wanted to delete so that I could have everything on my device, even if I was willing to pay extra for storage, I wouldn't have believed them. But that's the world that we now live in. Clown world. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.